So, we're back from CES. It was fun. It was fast. It was fatiguing. We still have a ton of footage to get through and edit, so the rest of our CES videos will be going up throughout this week, so stay tuned for those. But in this, our first net link of 2017, we're gonna round up the highlights of the show. And a couple lowlights for good measure, because life isn't all applesauce and donut holes, okay? I don't know where you got that idea. Lots to talk about. All right, here we go. Wireless virtual reality is pretty much a done deal now, with at least three different options being shown off last week. The most prominent was TPCast, a module that attaches to the HTC Vive strap, offering two hours of runtime and less than two milliseconds of added latency. It's expected to launch in Q2 for $249 US. River, that's R-I-V-V-R, is another wireless dongle for the Vive. It's got more latency at 11 milliseconds, but it's expected to launch this spring for $199. 50 bucks off. And finally, Quick VR is a hip mounted solution compatible with both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, but it's also got around 12 milliseconds of latency and a higher price tag at 300 bucks. Nvidia did not announce the GTX 1080 Ti as so many were expecting. Instead, they announced a new smaller and more powerful Shield Android TV with a redesigned controller. Okay, it's, it's kind of cool. Google Assistant is baked in, so you can control not only your entertainment, but also smart home functions, as the new Shield can do anything Google Home does. You can also get the NVIDIA Spot, a mic and speaker device that plugs into a wall outlet and connects to the Shield TV to offer Google Assistant services, just like the Amazon Echo Dot, except with Alexa instead of Google Assistant. NVIDIA also finally brought its GeForce Now streaming service to PC and Mac, meaning you no longer need a Shield device to play on, but you have to buy the games and then also pay to play them. So, still would have preferred the 1080 Ti, probably. Razer went all out at CES again and announced a triple display notebook. Project Valerie is just a concept right now. It's three 17 inch 4K screens. Don't actually fold up or anything, but it was real pretty to look at. Razer's other big prototype, Project Ariana, was a projector that surrounds your monitor or TV with peripheral visuals from your game. Both Razer projects are experimental and were such hot items at the show that they were both stolen from the company's booth, as CEO Min Liang Ten reported on Facebook. So, if you see anybody trying to sell a triple screen laptop on Craigslist, you know, you know who to call. All right, we gotta get through the rest of these real quick, so I guess this is quick bits. The LG Signature 4K OLED W Series TV has almost non-existent bezels and is just 2.57 millimeters thick. That's almost as thin as a credit card. It offloads processing to its soundbar companion via a single cable though, so I wouldn't give the TV too much credit. It's all beauty, no brains. Honda showed off its riding assist technology, which allows a motorbike to stay upright by itself, even while stationary, by making tiny little adjustments with the front wheel. And with self-driving car tech, it could follow people around. In case you just want it, like, as a, as a pet, you don't even want to ride it. Like, you captured this bike in the wild and you've tamed it, and it's too majestic to ride. That would be disrespectful. Anyways. Intel's new compute card is like its compute stick. It's a full computer, but even smaller, and will be inserted into dumb electronics like monitors and TVs to make them full PCs. It's mainly going to be for business use, but it's cool to see a swappable credit card sized PC regardless. Faraday Future, the big scary Tesla competitor, had a major gaffe on stage when its FF91 prototype failed to drive off stage on cue. So, that was awkward. <laughs> The Asus Zenfone AR is the world's first phone to have both Google Project Tango and Daydream VR capability, and Jack did a quick video on it at CES, so click the link in the corner for that. BlackBerry's first post-BlackBerry phone, codenamed Mercury, was shown off by its actual manufacturer, TCL. But it just doesn't feel the same. I miss you, BlackBerry. Well, actually, no, I don't, but I'm sure some people do. Maybe. And similarly, HMD Global, which now owns the rights to release Nokia phones, will release the first Nokia Android phone, the Nokia 6, this year, but only in China. <sighs> China gets all the cool stuff. Sources for all of today's news stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description. Sweet pow. Oh. Is that enough? Speaking of sweet pow, Okay, there's actually no way to segue there. Look at this shirt! 
Born to play. What describes me in three words? That does. It's what I used to tell my mom when she asked me to do chores. I'm like, uh, does my shirt say born to do chores, mom? And she would say, I don't know, you've locked your bedroom door. And I'd say, exactly, born to play, dude. And that's why I don't live at home anymore. Get your own born to play sweater from NX Fusion, NX, NCIX's new line of apparel for tech enthusiasts. And let everyone know what, what you were born to do in case they don't know yet. All right, that's it for Netlink Daily. Thank you so much for watching. Click here for our CES coverage. Check us out on Twitter. Our handles are down there. Like the video if you liked it. If, yep. Comment below for fans with benefits. Subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. I am having a hard time. Ooh, now I gotta get some rest. Hopefully next CES, somebody invents batteries for people. Am I right? <laughs>